what up and welcome back to structure free learning and in this video we're going to do a reinforced concrete analysis problem and we're going to look at a cracked elastic section analysis in this problem we're given that the area of steel in tension is three inches squared with three number nine bars and the modular ratio is equal to approximately eight and the applied moment or the applied service moment is equal to 100 kip feet and what we want to do, we want to find the stresses in the steel and the maximum compressive stress in the concrete. And this is what the cross section looks like. And the applied moment is a positive bending, or in our case, compression at the top, tension at the bottom. And so this cross section has a depth from the extreme compression fiber to the tension steel of 17.5 inches, an overall height of 20 inches and a width of 12 inches. And now I, I kind of like to draw the strain and stress profile just to visualize the problem we're trying to solve. Bam and bam. The strain profile that we're gonna be dealing with, and in most cases in reinforced concrete design, that strain profile is linear. Bam, here's my strain profile. This is my compressive strain. This at the very bottom, I'll call my tensile strain. And right where my steel layer is, this right here, I'll call epsilon S. I, you know, the problem statement says cracked elastic section. So yes, this thing is probably cracked, right? And with the applied moment. So, you know, not to waste time here, we're just gonna go ahead and assume that the cross section is cracked. But if you, if you want to verify that the cross section is cracked, you'd have to calculate the cracking moment of the section and then compare it to the applied moment which means that the applied moment is greater than the cracking moment. And now because the cross section is cracked, there's some implications about the strain. And so in order for the cross section to be cracked, that means the tensile strain in the concrete at the very bottom is greater than the tensile rupture strain of the concrete itself, which would be calculated by Hooke's law, the modulus of rupture or the tensile strength divided by the modulus of elasticity of concrete. And because we have an elastic cross section, the compressive strain in the concrete is less than the strain for concrete's proportional limit. And the steel is also in its linear elastic region, which means it hasn't yielded its less than epsilon y or the yield strain of steel. Our approach is to determine the neutral axis depth. And in order for us to do that, we're gonna apply the first moment of area and then we're gonna apply the flexure formula to calculate stresses. And I, you know, I like to look at this problem. It's not a difficult problem conceptually, but the hard part is always calculating the section properties or the geometric properties of the cracked section. And the stresses or the stress profile, given the strain implications, we could come up with the stress profile because everything is linear elastic by just using Hooke's law. The stress profile is also linear and my neutral axis is where my strain is zero. So this will represent my neutral axis location. Yes, and here this is this neutral axis depth that we're gonna find first. And here my stress profile, let's see, I'll put red for compression because I like colors. So bam. And if everything were concrete, and I'm gonna choose a dotted line because it's cracked, so boom, it's cracked here. It's all cracked, so there's no concrete in tension. It's gone, right? But I do have some steel stress here. And this steel stress right here, equivalent to concrete would be Fs divided by N. But because the steel has a different modul modulus of elasticity, or the modulus of elasticity of steel times epsilon S would actually give me Fs itself, which would be this which would really like in terms of some relative scale here, it'd be a much larger stress value because, because the, the modulus of elasticity of steel is about you know eight to nine times larger than that of concrete typically. All right, so now we wanna use the transformed area method to calculate the neutral axis depth. And because we have a composite, we gotta transform one material into the other. And in this case, we're gonna transform the steel into an equivalent area of concrete. And the way we do that is to multiply by the modular ratio, and our area of steel is three inches squared. So our equivalent area of steel in terms of concrete is eight times three inches squared, 
which is 24 inches squared. Way, the way the cross section would look like now would be this funky looking like shape where I have this huge lump of steel area. In this area, this, this area right here would be this NAS. And then up to the neutral axis, this is my area of concrete that still remains. And this thing here has some width of B or 12 inches still. And essentially what we're doing is, is taking this cross section, which is the square and this giant area of steel or this rectangular area of steel and finding the centroid of it. So we can use any reference location. A very popular reference location is to actually use the neutral axis location. And I will choose, let's say I will choose any area going this way as positive or any distance measured from here going that way as positive any area any distance measured from here going upwards as negative what i want to do is find the first moment of area from with respect to my reference and in this case my neutral axis or my centroid is going to be where my reference is so in that case you know you might be familiar with this y bar equals sum of a i y i over sum of a and this Y bar would represent the distance from the reference to the geometric centroid of the cross section. The distance from the reference to the neutral axis location would be zero. And any area above, so this, I have this area above here. This area would be 12 inches times CNA. The distance from the reference to the centroid of this first area would be negative CNA over two. And then my steel area, I would have plus NAS times this distance, which is the distance or the arm from here to the centroid of my steel look. And this is D minus CNA divided by the total area of this cross section, which is, but you know, if I multiply both sides by this term, then you know, that because I have zero, this is just gonna cancel out. And I can use this relationship here to actually solve for CNA. And you know, if I work out this, some, some basic algebra, so now we're left with this quadratic equation and once we solve it out and those roots are they're 6.60 inches or negative 10.6 inches and you're going to choose the positive root and so our cna or our depth to the neutral axis from the extreme compression fiber is 6.6 .6 inches now that we know where the neutral axis is the centroid of this you know equivalent concrete cross section we can calculate the other section property that's going to be important for us which is the moment of inertia about the neutral axis. So now knowing this CNA, we want to determine the moment of inertia of this, you know, funky looking concrete section here or this equivalent concrete section that is simply just applying the parallel axis theorem. And since the cross section is cracked, this is what we call the cracked moment of inertia. And we're going to use the parallel axis theorem for this. And here in this cross section, there are two area elements. There's the this top half right here, this 12 inches times CNA area, so we'll call this area one, and this we'll call the steel, the equivalent concrete area of steel as area two. And so applying the parallel axis theorem, we would have that here for that first top area, we have the 112 base or the width of the beam times the CNA cubed plus the parallel axis part. So the area times the arm from the neutral axis. So B times CNA times the arm, which would be CNA over two squared. And this would be the moment of inertia or contribution of moment of inertia from that top half or element one, plus the moment of inertia of the steel or the equivalent concrete area. But now in this case, that steel, the height is so small, we can neglect the moment of inertia of the steel about itself. So we're going to assume that to be approximately zero. So we're going to neglect that. Plus the area of the steel or the equivalent concrete area, which was this N times AS and the arm or the distance to the this neutral axis. And now we just need to plug and chuck. And here, when you go through and you solve this all out, this cracked moment of inertia is 4,001. 0.44 inches to the fourth. And that's an important result because we're going to need that for the flexure formula in order to calculate the stresses. So what we're looking at so far now is this, and now we just need to apply the most selfish formula in the world, the flexure formula, my over i. And here I, you know, I'm doing like an absolute value equation, but y is defined from the neutral axis upwards. And you might've seen it in mechanics and materials as negative my over i, if you're paying attention to like 
compression and tension. But we know here with the way that the moment is applied, we know the top half or everything above the neutral axis is in compression, everything below the neutral axis is in tension. So now we just want to calculate these stresses. So here in compression at the very top, or I want to calculate stresses, the compressive stress at the very top. Well, here first, before we get all crazy and all into it, we know that the generic formula for the flexor formula, this normal stress, is equal to negative my over i. We know that, and you know, you can also use, a lot of people like to use just like the absolute value because they already know what side is in compression and tension. And I know that my, you know, the very top of this beam, because of the way the moment is applied, is in, is in compression. So at the top, my compressive stress, my F comp equal to moment, which was 100 kip feet. I gotta convert that feet into inches, so 12 inches per foot. The distance from the neutral axis to the very top, that's 6.6 .6 inches. Bam, 6.6 .6 inches divided by the moment of inertia, which we calculate for the cracked elastic section, 4,001.44 inches to the fourth and when i work this number out i will get 1.98 ksi about 2 ksi so that's you know it's a little high it's right at the proportion it's about right at the proportional limit of concrete you know we're close enough where we'll, we'll assume that that's okay if i wanted to calculate the stress at the steel location using the flexor formula i want to calculate the magnitude of stress of this point right there that's the stress of equivalent concrete at the steel location so he, really what that stress value is is fs divided by the modular ratio and this again would be the same kind of relationship and this distance is is just the distance to the steel from the neutral axis, which is just 17.5 inches minus the 6.6 .6 inches. And you know, if you look at the two equations, you could just proportion them and just, you know, you could divide out 6.6 .6 from the 1.98 and multiply it by this number and this term right here. And that would give us 3.27 KSI if this steel location were an equivalent concrete. The actual stress in the steel would be Fs. You got to multiply this number by the modular ratio, so it'd be eight times 3.27 ksi, and this is 26.16 ksi, which also confirms that we are in the elastic range of steel, which is less than the yield stress of steel. So let's say a 60 ksi steel. Bam! And you could even calculate the strains by applying Hooke's law to, to these equations and get strain values. You could have some strain values and then you can reverse this whole problem, right? You could like put sensors at, at the steel location and then measure the strains and then calculate the load that was actually applied to this, assuming it's in the cracked elastic range. All right, hopefully this problem was helpful. You got a sense of what the how to calculate stresses in the materials. And go ahead and make some comments down below. I'll even try to read them and respond. If anything, I will like them. All right, baller's got a ball. See ya. Structure